happy Monday, everybody, and welcome to the second Ruzel Live Scumbassador Education today. It's a, been a bonus day, two for one, if you want to say. Um, this morning we had Q Paulson joining us from Florida, and now we have Katie Dixon joining us from Burbank, California. I'm Carrie Fonte with Ruzel Education. Any questions, comments, thoughts you have, type them in the comment bar. I'll interrupt Katie when the time is right. We'll be sure to get everything answered and address all your needs. I'm going to stop talking because she's going to crush it. You're going to enjoy this very much. Katie, take it away. Hey, thanks, Carrie. I'm here today with my model, Will. Um, we're just going to be going over some clipper over comb. I mean, really, I want to focus today on just really dialing in how you can do a nice contoured cut using the Rusal baseline theory and also clipper over comb. So first thing we wanna do is we wanna do a dry assessment of the hair, especially when you have texture in hair. I mean, who doesn't have texture? But when you have this type of great texture, we have curls, we have wave, we have thickness. You need to assess what's going on, especially front hairline assessment. So we see on Tim, we have a very strong curl up front that kind of turns into more of a wave in the back. So we know that's going to dictate how we're going to do our cut and what our cut is going to be able to style out as. So we know we're not, because of these strong curls here at the hairline, we know we're not going to be doing some super smooth, slicked pompadour unless he wants to blow dry it and style it out. But today we're going to be enhancing the natural texture. So. Once I go through, I do my dry assessment. I'm seeing kind of how he does it. And a dry assessment doesn't just mean the hair has to be clean and blow dried. The dry assessment is how the guy walks into the barber shop. You know, that might be he comes in with some product in his hair. He comes in with product from yesterday and he's a little disheveled. Or he comes in with tons of product or no product. It's just that first assessment of, what does he look like right now? And then we're gonna jump in and do our wet assessment. So I find because of product and because I'm a barber, I'm not doing many shampoos. I'm mostly dissolving product with my water. And my water, I have a little bit of the hair tonic. I have about, I do about a one to 20 ratio, depending on how much water I have in my bottle. That's about one ounce to 20 ounces to make it easy. Um, and that really helps melt the product, helps, helps like start the process of breaking that down. So as I go in and I'm just spraying down all of the hair, I'm not leaving half of it dry. I'm not leaving, you know, the, the lower zones dry because I'm actually going to do clipper over comb on those wet. And having inconsistencies in the dampness of your hair when you're trying to clipper over comb will create inconsistencies in your cuts. So I get them real moistened. I know people don't like that word, but it's a word and we're using it. So I get them real moistened, get the hair completely dampened. And then I'm just gonna start moving it around. I'm gonna start seeing what the hair wants to do, what it does when it's wet, how the hairline naturally forms when it's wet. We can see we've got some curls going on all over the place and we've got some straight hair. I love a multi-textured head like this. I come from a, a family of straight hair on top, curly hair on the bottom. So we're very lucky in that way. But now I'm just kind of moving it around. I'm able to manipulate the hair really easily when it's wet like this. So I can see exactly where his hairline is. I can see where his corners are. I can see all of these things. So once I get it all damp, that's when I'm going to go in and put, put in my primary parting. So our primary parting is what is going to dictate the baseline. And that is always the corner of the head. But in the expanded shape. So we're trying to find where 
the true corner of this head is because we're creating a square on a on a circle object on a cylindrical object so the first thing i like to do is find where the natural recession is and go off of that but then bone structure head shape you want to go off of where right where the round is So you can go in, put some clips in, you know, depending on the length of the hair. Um, Tim has a lot of hair, so I'm actually able to just move it without. But if you have a client that maybe has hair that is just a little too short and you try to go in and put this line and it's, it's kind of fallen around, you definitely want to get the clips out for that. So there we are. So this is the dominant side, which is where I begin. It's my right side. You would just start on whatever dominant side you have. And this is our primary parting. And then I'm going to go in. I just start combing upward. I almost kind of like flare the hair out. I really Kind of want to see how much expanded shape we have, see the movement, and then I'm going to go in and put my first cut. So the thing that I really love about, about baseline theory versus the way I was initially taught how to cut hair, which I think back about how I was initially taught how to cut hair, I taught myself how to cut hair. So I didn't really have a foundational, you know, I just figured you start here and you go up the place to go. But that's not intentional. That's just you're you're sort of winging it when it comes to head shape. When you go in and put in a baseline, you're setting yourself up for an elongated square shape and you're protecting that round of the head rather than going in and possibly rounding it out or creating a wedge shape or going too tight. It's sort of like a when you're creating a bob you want to do the perimeter first because that's the strongest line. You don't want to cut that line off. This is just the perimeter of a bob. All right. So depending on where, how much hair I want to cut off, I kind of will float my comb in different places so I can see. I'm going to bring them just a little just a wee bit closer. So you see, I go into the head and then I kind of float my comb and I can kind of find where I wanted to find that. But I always want to keep my comb not tilting towards me, not tilting towards the head, because this is going to maintain weight. This is going to reduce weight. We want to create that parallel to the head, perpendicular to the ground, 90 degrees, however you want to see it. I like saying just straight. And we're going to go in, define our baseline. And to maintain a square shape, you always want to stay right in front of the section that you're working. If you start contorting your body, moving your body, then you're actually pulling that comb with you. So you're either you're over directing or you're reducing weight. So the way that we can keep that nice square is by always staying right in front of our section. I might contort my body a little bit just to help you guys see a little bit better, but you always want your body, head, everything has to match that square straight shape. So I've gone through a couple of the other lives and I noticed that the question is, after you put the baseline, what is that next section that we do? So it's right under. So when I was initially taught how to clipper over comb, 
it was just sort of like, this is your cutting line, the spine of the comb, and you just move up the head. And that's all I was taught. So when you think about baseline theory, it's sort of opposite than what most people were taught, but you're still working with the spine of the comb being your cutting line, and your, but your guide is above you rather than below. So what I, I'm gonna bring this in hella tight. Just a bit. So you see how there's this hair that's sort of flaring out underneath, and then we have our baseline right here. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go in, find, there's my baseline. There's my cutting that I need to do. It's sitting against the spine. It's at a 90 degree. It's straight out. Boom. Then right underneath it, do the same. See, we still have that hair kind of flaring out underneath that section. Find, find the previous section we just cut. Do it again. And do it again. So Tim's really great in that he has curly hair and it can show that flare for you guys on camera. Let's bring it a little closer. But a lot of times with straighter hair, you it might be a little hard to see it. So you really want to make sure that your comb is a contrasting color to the hair. So if he had black hair, I would not be using a black comb. I need to be able to see what I'm doing. And you never, you want to be very careful when you're floating with a guardless blade, you know, scissors that are just constantly cutting. So the way, the way I like to do these combs, these clipper combs were specifically designed with a groove under the cutting line, under the spine of the comb for the corner of your blade to go into. So when you're holding your clipper in pencil position, you just, you can always have this perfect like it's almost like a, a road that it just goes down. So you never are going underneath. You're never hitting the outside of the comb. So when you go in and you kind of go around it, you have a place for the corner of your blade to always go. I'm just gonna move through, working to the section right above it and we're creating just a nice contour up against his head. So you can see we have this hair flaring out. All right, now that we have debulked and mostly cut our, our dominant side, now I'm gonna move on, I'm gonna replicate it on our non-dominant side. So we see we have everything combed over. I'm gonna do the same where I find, I find his natural recession. And then I also find where the round of his head is based off of his bone structure. So here we find our natural recession and not everybody's natural recessions will match their head shape. I, and especially not on one side will not match the other. My right recession on my head is wildly different than my left recession. And you will find this on many of your, your guests, your clients, so. going with that bone structure is gonna create a symmetrical cut rather than trying to go off of an asymmetrical hairline, which most of us tend to have. So I go in and you can use another comb to do this. I like to use my hand. So I'm creating the square, finding the diagonal from the square, that's the point that I know I need to be at. And now, see I'm creating a straight line, but as I go back, the straight line curves. 
but I'm still creating a straight line because I'm defining a straight line on a rounded object. It is going to create a slight curvature. And I'm also trying to go just below where his crown is and where the, where the cowlick back here is, just above the occipital. So below the crown, above the occipital. So now that I have this side defined again, I'm gonna go in, create my baseline, and then I'm gonna check for balance. Checking for balance is something that I feel like a lot of us were we're told in different, in, you know, in our first training, but it is so vital for consistency in your, in your cutting for, you know, moving forward. You don't, you don't want to get so, so lackadaisical and just knowing what, you know, you think you know what you're doing that you don't check. If you're not checking your work, you know, you're just assuming that you're doing well. And I mean, with the whole baseline theory, we don't operate off of assumptions here. So and go in and I'm my body is not in the correct position because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing so I would be standing in front but you don't need to see my nice blazer fabric so go in to find that baseline and then using my comb just going to use the spines of my comb or the notches on my comb. I'm going to measure baseline. Right, it's about right there. Come to the other side. Find my baseline. I need to go just a touch shorter on the left side. I mean, I'm just about a quarter inch, but I mean, it looks the same, but when you check, there's a bit of a difference. You know, when you have a slight millimeter difference, you create an asymmetrical haircut. And that's not why your guests are coming to you, unless they are, and that's a different story. But that's not the shape we're creating. So I'm gonna go in, and I always start my baseline behind, not where the front hairline, because we think about this hair, this hair has a lot going on. It's got weird textures. The hairline is formed. It, we really want to create our baseline. We want to start behind the ear and then we move forward and we move back. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm moving up to the hairline. Also taking a little bit more off my baseline just to make sure they match. And then I'm moving back. And then just a little closer so you can see again how I go. I bring the lower section up to the baseline, find it, and then up to the section prior, find it, cut it. Now the thing I really love about cutting down versus cutting up is I can see what I'm doing so much more and I'm not I'm, I'm able to maintain my my desired weight through the bridle through my baseline curl did not want to cooperate See, we've moved through. Gonna go work down, work down, work down. And now this is not a completed cut. I mean, you can see I have not lined him up. I have not faded anything out. I haven't tapered anything. None of these things have happened yet. That's gonna happen after we blow dry. So now I'm gonna bring it in to the fun part. We're going to start cutting the fun hair, which is the top hair. So now we're going to put in our preliminary parting. And that's what's going to define our front 
corner crown, the FCC, the CCF. So first thing I'm gonna do, and I'm gonna bring the camera in just a little closer. And soon I'm gonna have you just tilt your head forward like that, thank you. So going off of where the middle of his head is, and that can usually be found by the nose. We're gonna go and make our first line. And then using our comb, we're gonna find where the apex is. Where does the comb sit flat? Where does the comb sit flat? Just about right here. So that's gonna be the highest point of our head called the apex. And that's gonna tell me where to define the crown from the corner. Crown, corner. And we go a little bit before, and now this is off of less of the bone structure and more of the hairline structure because now we want to make sure when we're defining our front we're not breaking into the corner we're not cutting these corners off we're not going in and taking this too short because this is the some of the finest hair on all of our heads is right here in this corner and most people men and women will say don't don't expose this don't make this worse you know, I know I, I even mentioned I have a, a really wonky recession on my right side. If I pull my hair back in a pony, I feel terrible. So I get it. And when there's male pattern baldness, you know, any sort of alopecia, like in my case involved, it can be touchy. This is setting ourselves up to just not even not even cut it off and we're and we're pulling it away. So that's how we're creating our head. I'm gonna bring this up. Our front corner crown. Thanks, Tim. So the first section I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take a horizontal section in the crown. Bring them around. horizontal section in the crown and again my body position would be standing right in front of the camera but I'm going to be offset a little bit but I'm going to be making sure that my hand positions are very much square so the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to find my baseline because everything is cut to the baseline that's what I love about it we're cutting the top to it we cut the bottom zone to it. It just makes sense. It gives us a place to always go in the haircut. So I'm going to pull this up, make sure that my baseline is being held 90 degrees straight out from the head, parallel to the floor. And go in and make my first cut. So my section is being slightly over directed down to the 90 degree baseline. So we're creating sort of a graduation if that's, if that's your cutting style, but really we're just, we're creating that weight through the, through this region. Now I'm going to take another horizontal section and pull it down. Now we want to really make sure when we're going in and doing these cuts that we're not cutting into our baseline. We're using the baseline as the guide. The thing I like to do to check is I start to kind of give it a little comb back, almost a little pompadour shape. And if we see everything laying nicely, that's how I know I'm able to continue. So now I'm going to move on to the corner section, go in, I'm going to do a horizontal section and bring it down to the baseline. I think the thing I love most about Ruzel's cutting system is their sectioning. 
and their combing method. Because really, a good barber is not someone who cuts hair well, because cutting hair is something that the scissor or the clipper does. We comb the hair. We comb it and we comb with intention and we create path, pathways in which we work. That's where the skill is, because anyone can cut hair. I mean, anybody, I did it when I was three years old and my dad wouldn't get off the phone. So I chopped all my hair off with kitchen scissors. That doesn't mean I combed it. I didn't do anything skilled about that. Katie, <laughs> great that? story, by the way. I did my first haircut at three years old with little kitty scissors, so I love that. Um, but there's a question for you. Um, how do you determine if you take the parting above or below the crown? That's the question. Above or below the crown. So that is going to be defined usually in your consultation. Um, a lot of, I, I, rec I just recently had one of those. I am a big believer in you want to maintain length through the crown. So you always want to put your section below the crown. Is that, is that what we're talking about? About where we want to, if we want to cut the crown off or if we want to keep the crown long? Um, because there's, right? They of weren't. Where we want to, but we I, want, I like we want it high or low. Yeah, yeah. So stay with that, please. Yeah. So when we do it lower and we're, we're defining, our crown, we want to define it off of where the whirl, where the hair pattern goes, because sometimes we'll have it all over the place. He has sort of your normal kind of central whirl back here. So we want it to be lower than that. Now, sometimes you'll have, you'll have guests that have it off to the side, you'll have it even sort of lower. And in that case, you're gonna wanna drop your primary parting a little lower than that because we want to keep weight through the crown. And we always need to define where that crown is based off of their hair patterns. I'm gonna interrupt you. One more minute. Thank you. That was a great explanation, by the way. And um, I'm just going to interrupt you for one more minute because I, I want to thank you for how detailed you're explaining things and how you're showing and moving your camera. We really appreciate it because you've got viewers from Thailand, the United States, the Canary Islands, the Philippines, Mexico, um, a, a lot of viewers. And I know that they really appreciate you taking the time, Katie, and, uh, and showing yeah, us cool. exactly what you're doing. Thanks. All right. So now I'm going to connect. Now that I've finished the corner section, I've finished my dominant side crown and corner section. I'm going to go into the front. So the way that I describe this is horizontal to the hairline, which creates sort of a diagonal shape because if you look at a hairline it doesn't it's not that perfect line it almost is at this sort of angle but my first section for the front I'm actually going to pull into the other side as well I'm going to have you tilt just a little bit forward for me Jim this is my first section for the front because it is horizontal to the hairline so even though it's a diagonal line you could consider, it really is a true horizontal line. So I'm gonna go back up. So now we're gonna connect the front into the baseline, but we wanna maintain length. And depending on how much length you wanna maintain, what your plan is for the front, that's where your finger angle is gonna come in. Whether you're gonna, you know, what if we wanted to do a crop, let's say, I would have more of a horizontal hairline or finger line. If we wanted to do something more like a pompadour, maybe something like an executive contour where there's going to be definitely length being styled backwards, we're gonna to wanna to maintain that and drop our finger angle pretty low to maintain that length. So that's a decision that you're gonna make based off of where the haircut wants to go. Not necessarily the 
the hairline or the bone structure like I've been talking about before, but this is going to be a stylistic choice because the way that we have this sectioned, because we're pulling this over the corner, whether we're dro super dropping it or we're doing something more horizontal like a crop, we're still maintaining our weight through here, our length through here, and we're not gonna overexpose the corner. So Tim today is looking for something a little more on the short side in front. He's not too worried about having a very voluminous front. I'm gonna do a little bit more of a horizontal, but I am gonna drop my finger angle just a touch. And then I'm gonna over direct all that front to my finger angle. Then I'm gonna go and take another section horizontal to the section taken prior. Connect my baseline, drop my fingers, find the previous elevation and finger angle, over direct, and we're just moving along. All right, and then I'm gonna split it up again, move on to the other side, and we're just moving along. Going to find those again. So I really want to enhance Tim's natural texture because he's got this great wave. He's got these curls in front. And a couple, a couple of Ruzel's products that I love to use for defining natural texture is the Surf Spray. The Surf Tonic is absolutely my favorite. It is what, and my old barber shop before I ever started working with Ruzel, it was the Surf Tonic that swayed me. I could not get enough of it. My clients couldn't get enough of it. And it just is some of the most fantastic sea salt spray, surf spray, whatever you want to call it. There's a million names for it on the market. It's a mixture of the grooming tonic with sea salt. I mean, it just, it gives hold, it gives texture. I just can't get enough. I mean, I use it in my hair. I use it. There's, I feel like there's not, there's few clients the surf spray doesn't work for, at least in Southern, I'm here in Southern California. I have female clients who want beach waves and are able to, you know, do second day hair with it. I have pixie cuts that like it, that get, they're able to get texture and lift with it. I, and then men who, you know, want to enhance their natural texture, who just want sort of a second day look. I feel like there's sort of, at least here in Los Angeles, there's this obsession with second day hair and the idea of lived in hair. And the Surf Tonic really gives that lived in second day perfect hair. Katie? Mm-hmm. Can you just turn your chair a little bit so we can see what you're doing there? Yeah, I'm going to hop this around. Perfect. Thank you so much. Absolutely. So I'm just working in my corner section. Moving it down. And to the baseline. Always to the baseline. And now we're at the front of our non-dominant side. And again, horizontal to the hairline. And then after I do sort of a rough dry with the Surf Tonic, I am going to use my other Holy Grail product, the matte styling paste. I actually don't have it on my shelf right now because I am totally sold out and I'm waiting on my shipment because I cannot keep it in stock. I swear. So now we're moving on to the top hair, to the fun hair. So I'm going to move him like this. So what I'm doing is I'm taking sort of about this size of a section of the center of his head. 
so I can see where the length of the crown is and where the length of the front is and what's going on with those two lengths. So I'm actually going to pull it up. So I can see his previous cut, somebody really softened the crown up. So I'm seeing sort of a rounding. And then I'm seeing a lot of length, a nice, a nice line through here. And then of course, because of our bone structure, it is longest through the apex. So this is the, the shape, the expanded shape he has now is not ideal. So we want to create that ideal, perfect, square, straight, elongated shape. When we have something that's longest in the apex, we have a cone head. You know, we are, we're pointing our head, which is great if you are, have a faux hawk or if you have a mohawk or that sort of shape, or you have a divot in your head and we need to maintain length. But what I'm going to do is find the very front hair and the crown hair. Hold the two up, compare the two. I'm actually seeing a lot of balance, but where the balance isn't is through the apex. So I'm gonna trim this down a little bit and I'm gonna trim a lot through, through that apex. So you see, how's that? How's that looking, Carrie? I feel like I have a white background on no, the lawn section. It's really good. We can see what you're doing. Thank you. Great. And and if you can, while you're cutting, there was a question. Um, what's your favorite oh. type of cut to do? My favorite type of cut to do is definitely scumbag boogie. Um, I love skin fades. I find they're kind of going out of fashion, which. I'm not super mad at, but I do love to grind out a real great fade on a head. I'm, I was the go-to at my old barber shop for skin fades, razor fades, bald fades, um, high and tights, that sort of thing. My, so my absolute favorite cut is a fade and it just, I like that clipper work. I really do. Anything that's heavy in clipper work. I'm a barber. It's 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 in my heart. <laughs> All right. And now I'm going to take the section. So what we're doing is we're creating a square shape on top. I'm pulling that up to the center, and I'm pulling up all this extra long hair. Just if there's any little, I mean, just the tiniest little bit. I'm gonna come around, do it on this side too. How's that look? Just the tiniest little bit of hair. All right. Now I'm just going to go and do some cross checking. I cross check, I don't cross cut. I'm going to say that again. I cross check, I don't cross cut. So I'm going to create horizontal sections and see what that looks like. So I'm going this way rather than this way. And I can see. There's a little more length on this side. So I'm gonna go and take my section that I took previously, pull it up. And there we go. So it's really vital to cross check, but not cross cut. Because you're start when you start to cross cut, because you start to cross check and you go, oh, there's my mistake. Then you're creating a different shape. You, you're just checking in that way. You need to go back to your previous technique and adjust there. All right, I'm gonna cross check one more time. One more time. Time. Beautiful. 
and I am going to push the crown forward. Perfect. So now I'm going to go in. It's time to style. We're going to, ah, <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. And bring them around to the right again and bring this back lovely all right so this is what i'm going to do while his hair is damp i'm going to go ahead and apply this and now because there's salt in this you can over apply this, even though it is a spray and it's light, you do want to be mindful that the salt can create some grittiness. So on really fine textures, you want to go a little bit of a lighter hand, but you're going to find that with any salt spray on the market, but wonderful. So just to enhance the natural texture, I'm not even going to use, I'm not going to use a brush. I'm not going to go in with my, my trusty Denman because that's going to smooth his texture out too much. What I'm going to do is go and kind of diffuse it. Start to kind of define where we want it to lay. We're already getting the really wonderful thing about our tonics is that we get a little bit of ease of drying with it. It helps facilitate the drying. I'm just going in. I'm kind of grabbing. You don't necessarily have to do this if your client doesn't have this type of curl or this type of wave. I'm just trying to bring out that natural texture. You really just want to enhance, enhance, enhance. All right. And now that we're dry, now I'm gonna move in and refine these lower regions. So I'm gonna taper out his neckline because we always want a tapered neckline because it elongates it elongates the neck it helps create that elongated shape because that's what we always need to be thinking of is we're in these elongated shapes because we want I mean we want to we want to lengthen we want to look taller we want to look slimmer we want to look more handsome we don't want to look like a you know a round head so Katie, can you just turn yes. your chair a little bit so we can see that? Because I know you're in the home stretch and you're doing the cleanup and then you're going to style soon and we want to see these fine details. So thank you. Yeah. So I'm going in to start the, I have a, a not great chair, so I'm just going to take it up to the heavens. So I'm going to start open and I'm just sort of moving up, getting these hairs out of the way. I'm going to close it now, go in, anchor, I'm just anchoring up against the hairline just to begin that taper and just really debulk down there and start to marry those two zones. Just moving up the head. And the reason I'm moving up the head in this case is I'm just trying to get this hair off so I can fade it off. We're not going to be moving up anywhere near our baseline. 
to where I'd want to work down from it. Because this is our refinement. And then after I finish the clipper refining of the lower zone, that's when I'm gonna go in with my, with my blending shears and refine some of the, the longer areas up in the higher zones. So for the sideburn, what I like to do is go in and anchor, anchor my comb right there up against the head. And I can even see my baseline is poking through there. So I know I'm not, I'm not going to be cutting into it. And then push the ear down, come up, find where those little hairs are, oh, move it off. Come in to the other side. And then just do the same. And I'm flipping my hands in a real backwards way because of me showing up. So for the sake of time, I will, I will finish the taper afterwards, but I wanted to show you guys the refinement technique using our blending shears. So So we see a little bit of a visual weight line, but we want that square shape. So I'm going to find that weight line and just soften it off a little bit. Just so visually we don't have a weight line, but structurally we still have that weight built up. And that's the real beauty of putting in these blending shears. So some people want to argue that it, a good haircut doesn't need blending shears. I, I don't agree or disagree either way. This is the way I do it, and I don't think there's right or wrong, but I have found so much success, especially with the heavier cuts through these areas, because a, a lot of people will say, oh, but it's just so, there's so much length, it's so heavy, but that's where the blending shears really come in and soften those lines up while not taking away why we put those shapes in there. And especially when you have clients with dyed hair and then hair that is, is darker, the blending shears really go in and soften that transition or sometimes it'll almost seem like there's a line, but it's, it's blended and it's, you know, it's tapered in, but it's that difference in color too. So, I'll be doing a little bit of blending shears through the back area here. I'm not going to be touching the up here with the blending shears. I'm really going to focus it on the place that doesn't have so much more, so much curl because we don't want to create curl against curl and that will just create frizz. So I'm going to avoid using it up in the textured area and more back in the, the area that needs it where there's a little weight and it's a little less curly. So using my same sections, I'm going to I'm going to refine with the same sections that I took to cut. And now I like to use I like to go in in a diagonal and point cut. Um, I just find it really gives a softer appearance, a softer result rather than if I was to go in and create the, that horizontal, I know a lot of us think, okay, blending shears, chunk, you don't wanna take it that close. We're refining the ends here. We're not, we're not doing a internal layering debulking scenario. This is about softening our shape. Right. So now I'm gonna grab, my matte styling paste 
And so usually I go off of the measurement of a knuckle, even with in the tube, I will still go off of knuckle. I mean, sometimes I'll say, oh, maybe a pea size, but I really like to think of things as knuckle to knuckles. Because there's no, we all have hands, right? Not all of us have seen green peas, I suppose. And I like to kind of work the product in against the way that we're going to be styling it. Because he's just going to wear his hair in his face. So I'm going to kind of start pulling everything out of his face. And just start to work that product in. I can feel areas where there is no product. And that's kind of where I then wanted to find that. Oh. And there it is. All of that curl is brought out. He is natural, but we've contoured him down on the sides. All right, I'm gonna go and start kind of lining them up. Is there any other questions about products or product recommendations? Uh, there's no questions, but uh, you've gotten a lot of really terrific comments. You have to go read them later. And uh, Nicholas Fury gave you a chef's kiss. You know how the chef like takes their fingers and oh yeah, he gave you one of those chef kisses for this. Oh, one. thanks, Nick. Um, may I talk for a moment while you're cleaning him up, Katie? Oh, please do. I just want to let everybody know there was a comment earlier, but we, Ruzel Pomade, have hit two, 200,000, um, what is it on Instagram? 200,000 followers. Followers. Thank you, Katie. 200,000 followers on Instagram, and we are giving away $200 worth of prizes. So when Katie's what? finished, I know, right? So when Katie's finished, That's everybody- That's a lot of Ruzel product, y'all. $200 of Ruzel products. I'll take it. So- Pop on over to our Instagram page when this is done and check it out and all the details are there. And thank you because we know you're here with us on Facebook watching our live and we know as well you follow us on Ruzel and YouTube. We very much appreciate you helping us to spread the greasy gospel and being part of our Ruzel family. So um, we it's because of you. We have 200,000 followers. Thanks again. Yeah, thank you guys. Wow. Also... That is so much product. Like you will never need to buy a hair product again in your life if you get $200 worth of of product, especially Ruzel product, because imagine you're getting probably shampoo. Oh my gosh, I could go on. But, all right. I'm just going in with it closed now just to kind of get those little hairs off his neck. And at this point, because I don't have a comb small enough that can really get in these regions, I'm just going to go in and pop my half guard on. There's very few times, there's very few guards I actually end up using. The half guard and the one and a half guard tends to be the only ones I use because anything else, I mean, these, these combs go to essentially what a one and a half would be or what 4.5 millimeters would be. So you can get real tight with using your clipper comb. But in these scenarios, you can't get down to a, a half or 1.5 millimeter. Now, if I could only find. I'm just going in and blending it off. And that I have my clipper at completely open. And now I have it at half open. Because once I get to this point, then I can use my, my comb, which is one and a half. And finish off that blend. Like 
Well, I hope you guys liked it. This is my handsome model, Tim, with all of our natural texture popping out. I find, especially with COVID, you know, us being in sort of a post COVID world, people are really experimenting with longer styles. People saw their natural texture in a way that maybe they didn't see it before because they were forced to grow it out and they were forced to see. I know I had one client come back to me and say, did you know I had curly hair? Uh, no, he had, he had curly hair, but it finally, it, you know, it was wavy and it finally showed up after six months of growth, which he had never done before in his life. So, you know, don't be afraid to talk to your, your clients and your guests, especially when they're coming in with new growth or with different things. I mean, I feel like all of us have had such, such a big change that these like new styles, longer hair just seems to be in is, and when I say longer, I mean, not buzz cut. I mean, cuts like this, which is funny to say, this is a longer men's cut, but coming from sort of the more military cuts that I was doing. And now I have clients going over to, you know, longer texturized on top like this. I think our cutting system is just absolutely phenomenal for these, for the new style that seems to be coming. So I hope you guys enjoyed. I really enjoyed sharing this with you and spreading the greasy gospel with you. Um, thank you so much. Thank you, Carrie. And thank you, uh, Thank you guys for tuning in. And, or if you're watching on the replay, thank you for watching on the replay. I appreciate you guys so much. Thank you, um, Katie. Thank you, Tim. We appreciate you doing something with Tim's natural texture. Thank you. That was terrific. Um, just a couple of public service announcements. If you do live in the Los Angeles area, we are going to be at BarberCon Los Angeles this coming Sunday. Yes, we are. So we'll be there. Taylor Hernandez will be there. And Court Dingwall will be there. So come by to the Russo booth and say hello. Um, and because we're going to be at BarberCon next week, there's nobody to do the live. So we will not have a live, but we will be back on Monday, November 22nd. And we look forward to seeing you then. Thanks, everybody. Katie will give us some pictures. We'll post the final looks. And uh, yep. we appreciate you all. Take care. Stay well. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.